Bethany and Sparky. This is Ask a Puppy Trainer Show. And episode? Episode number 93. We're almost at 100. 100. Yeah, we're almost at 100. That's important. Um, you guys can submit questions through your comments below. Age and breed of dog, please, or breed mix. Mm -hmm. And you can also submit questions ahead of time through Instagram. Mm -hmm. You can direct message us, and sometimes there's prompts. Just squeeze in, you know, nine-week Cavachon, you know, and then get to we your question. We do really appreciate each and breed. Mm -hmm. It helps tremendously in what we're going to answer. We've actually had a new habit from people where they put in age and breed and then they submit their questions so they can get all the characters they can. Like <laughs> that works too. Okay. Like all right. So let's get started. I've got um, Kristen, Kristen Hinch, our nine week Cavachon has been home with us for a week. We've got him on a schedule. We're noticing more barking and nipping. Our schedule is that she naps one and a half hours, potty awake an hour. Is that too long? That's not too long. I think it's a little too long for a nine week old. Oh, I maybe. Oh, uh, maybe. It I depends think, on I what you're doing. I 30 minutes personally, but what you're doing here 30 minutes is what actually carries the value. Yeah. So wait, 30 wait, minutes wait. of just running around and playing. Are you going to railroad me today? I, hey, you got me last week. So 30 minutes of just running around and playing. Finish the question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, hang on. Sorry. Everybody. Kimberly said finish the question. Yes. And you, you like to find out the airtime. And you have to listen to her, so. Okay. Uh, okay. Wait one hour. Is that too long? Okay. Supervised time and play pen. This is when the barking comes in. Uh, some nipping during play. Would he be getting overstimulated? You're a smart lady. You listen to this stuff and some regression with the potty stuff. Well, it's only been a week, that's normal. Honestly, uh, she was he, she was probably a little nervous your first few days of, uh, of bringing your puppy home. And so now they're getting more comfortable. You're seeing not a regression, a true side of what you're dealing with. We've had a few ac accidents during supervised alone time. What can we improve on? So I think you get a drop down that hour window to 30 minutes. I agree. And there's a few things in here that you mentioned uh, the supervised separation time, thank you. It's so, consists of play, train, supervised uh, time in play. Pen. She's, doing, she's doing our schedule. This is when the barking comes in, so kudos to you. You are doing our schedule. Uh, what I find though is a lot of people tend to do about 10 to 15 minutes of play, five minutes of training, and then like maybe another 10 to 15 minutes in the play pin. That's only going off the 30 minute. If you're doing an hour, you're probably getting about 20 minutes of play in maybe 10 minutes of training, because I don't know many nine-week-old puppies that will train longer, and then 30, 35 minutes in the playpen, I think you need to cut down on your playtime, cut that down like five minutes max, especially for this breed. Nine-week-old cabochon. Yeah, i cut that down in about five minutes or so, and make it valuable structured play. That doesn't mean chasing your puppy around the backyard, that means teaching them to come when called using fetch, teaching them to drop by playing tug and yeah. winning the majority of the time. If she, Things like that. If she likes tug, don't even bother with fetch right now. Just tug and then teach drop it. Tug, drop it. Like if she's um, like a normal puppy, and what I mean by that is she's confident, but she's not overly confident yet. You know, like I said, let her have it, you know, one out of every three times, you know, and kind of mix it up. You've got a puppy that's trying to rip the toy's head off, she doesn't win. She never ever. wins. <laughs> she always drops it. <laughs> yes. And then she gets it back as a reward for right. dropping it. Right. So it's like a trade off in a sense. Yeah. And then but just make it really structured. Yeah. And then uh, for the barking in the playpen, some dogs will bark in the playpen. You can try disagreeing with it. You can try walking up and kind of lift, lifting the playpen an inch off the ground and putting it down quickly and saying no. That's called disagreeing. It's like if a dog is in the crate and they're bark, 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 you come up, you tap the top of the crate, not the dog, the crate, and they're like, whoa, what the heck was that? And you don't say anything else. It's just a no, pause. You got a crate and covered so they can't see it. They kind of back off and settle and you walk away. It's your disagreeing with it. You can try it, but if you have a really, really, really pushy puppy and a very motivated puppy to bark, the playpen's probably not gonna work with you. Bethany is a really big advocate for doing a back tie. So you put on a harness, leash the harness, tether not it in Not something. at nine weeks. Yeah, I didn't not at nine know weeks. what you're gonna say about yeah, that. Yeah, nine weeks is a little early. What I would be a bigger advocate for is she still gets crate time, nap time during the day. So she's in another room for nap time. And then maybe for 15, 20 minutes, you could have the same size crate out with you. So she sees the comings and goings of the house, but she doesn't have so much room to get worked up. That may, not, that may still not work, but sometimes it can be better if space is an issue. I'll say real quick, if your nine-week-old puppy doesn't have a natural instinct to play structured fetch, 
that's okay. You can continue to shape it. But what you could do instead is give her three to five minutes in the playpen if she wants to chew something or lick something, like chew a Nyla bone or lick a wet food out of a Kong, something like that. But it's three to five minutes and instead of structured play because maybe she's not into it yet. And then she goes back in and creates. Can you give us a little bit more information over here with this arrow? No, nope, it's the same. It's from this person. The dog barks when they leave the room during supervised play. Yeah, it says that here too. It, it? She barks in the playpen. Yeah, but only when they leave the room. Okay. So supervised separation isn't about leaving the room. It's about supervising your puppy in the room that you're in. I don't know many dogs that at that age that are probably getting even a little bit of affection that wouldn't bark when you leave the room. So we use the crate to leave the room yeah. and put them in. So if you, you need gotta to use leave the, the room, you gotta use the bathroom. Back to the crate. You're going back in the crate. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say it's gonna probably help with some of that barking, and then also what she just said. And we there's move one on. more thing. I know, but there's one more thing. Uh, you've had a few accents during supervised load time. Already addressed that. It's because your hour is too long. There we go. Okay. okay. Uh, so tighten your schedule up a little bit and get back to us in a week, please, Kristen. Okay. Uh, the other one that was kind of split up. Here we go, Lisa. Twelve week old lab. Watching all the videos and love them. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, 12 week old Labrador. Sorry, I had to say that again for myself. Um, we're learning so much. Your videos mentioned DMing you for a crate schedule. Mm -hmm. Yes. I already sent her one. Oh, you should already have one, uh, says our boss. Okay. <laughs> what do you suggest? We're doing place command, thresholds, come, sit, stay. Pretty good at all of it. You need to do place. Place is so important. It's mm -hmm. It teaches a, a less confusing stay so good place is just a barrier cots or vest or a dog bed you'll probably need to move the dog bed when you're not actively working with a lab because they're going to treat it like a toy if it's just sitting out if it's a cloth bed but anyway let me move on um pretty good at this sleeps from 9 p.m to 5 a.m uh that is most retrievers uh, not all because we just had one recently that that poor girl but oh, most, oh, most oh, retrievers oh. are so good at sleeping through the night quickly just so you all know uh she does crate naps as well two to three times a day is she not resting enough one to two hours to, so that's um so that's eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen that's not bad that's not bad. I bet she's resting a little bit while she's out, maybe, as well. But you want a 12-week-old puppy to get around uh, 18 hours a day. Let's see. 18 to 20. Well, we say 18 to 20, but if, if you're doing good and you're not seeing a lot of craziness and overstimulation... We don't believe in fixing something that's not broken, because most likely it's just going to break it. Bingo. The main issue is... Oh, 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 oh. Here's the break. Here we go. Biting and aggressive play. We have to actively work with her at all times. She's not in crate. Normal. Uh, and and it's, it's exhausting. exhausting. Normal. <laughs> Welcome to That's a puppy. That's a lab puppy. Welcome to a puppy. Uh, he, he's the lab guy. He definitely knows. How much should she be in her own crate? Thank you so much for your time. Uh, we have split level house. Carrying her. Oh, and they want to know how to signal to potty. They don't learn how to signal to potty until they're potty trained. <laughs> until they know how to hold it, which like their brain tells their body, which is gonna be more like the six month mark. If you guys want a potty belt or something like that, you teach potty belt as a trick, but you don't rely on it for, for several months. Like, cause the puppy shouldn't get any free time. The puppy will eventually just start ringing that bell to go outside and play. Yeah, that, well, that sometimes open sometimes. for potty. There's a lot of different things. I am not a huge potty well advocate. Yeah. I'm an advocate of your of you learning, learning your, your dog dog's schedule. <laughs> learning your dog. Hey, yo. My German Shepherd. You know, we just give regular outings because I don't want to. I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with my dogs feeling like they have to ask me. But I know some people really like that. Our German Shepherd comes and does a creepy stare at us. It's just different. So Cheyenne. It's just different. She put her head on the couch. It's yeah. It's like a different type of stare, and you're like, what? And then when you stand up and she runs to the back door, you figure out the signal. <laughs> and that does take time. Yeah. But again, just to reinforce what she said, you have to get them on a schedule first. They have yeah. to learn how to hold it for four or five hours yeah. before they're going to start alerting you. Our dogs, most time, we just know their schedule. Yeah. I would say maybe once, twice a week, our dogs actually let us know when they have to go potty. And that's only because maybe it was a weekend and we were having cocktails with their friends and we, didn't, we lost track of time. Yeah. So then they're reminding us. Yeah. 
So anyway, not to blow that question off, you can learn how to teach a potty bell and stuff like that probably through a, a, a Google YouTube search, but just don't rely on it for quite some time. It's, it's meant to take months for you to depend on it because like I said, at least six months old before the brain tells the body to hold it. Okay, um, let's see. The biting aggressively, aggressive play. So here's the thing with a 12 week old lab, when you say 12 week old lab, for me, I'm like, that's a baby with sharp, a baby predator with sharp teeth. That's what you have. Yeah, for shredding meat. For shredding meat. I know labs tend to be more retriever driven, but they will treat their owners like chew toys, hardcore. I think I have more biting labs here than any other dog that I have. And that, I think that that's because their breed is meant to retrieve and hold in their mouth. So it's so instinctual and in a puppy form, like when you look at that from a puppy, it's like they need to be nipping, biting all the time because they have such a strong instinct when they mature to have things in their mouth. And so what I would say is that what you're experiencing is normal. I know it's exhausting, but we come across 12 week old puppies all the time where it's great. 10, 15, 12 weeks old should be able to do 10, 15 minutes of structured training, move slower, take deeper breaths, lower voice, no excitement, always a leash on, food work. Then instead of doing fetch, which uh, with a ball, it was just gonna amp up the drive and you're gonna really nurture that hunting drive, just get a bigger tug toy and teach tug and drop. And, and make sure you move it around, because if you don't move around the toy, they're gonna start jerking it around even yep. more. So tug and drop and just focus on that and, uh, and then drop back to crate. Strong body language. Don't go from a cross position and stay there. And the minute they let it go, come up tall. Sit. Perk out your chest. Toy behind your back. Sit with food if you I need don't, it. I don't put the toy behind my back. Because, I put it behind my back. because I don't I don't remove items from dogs. I make them back away from items. But anyway, we can we can agree to disagree. So how, how effective do you think that's gonna be for them? Well, it's super effective. Is that a body block? It's, well, then they learn how to do a body block. Anyway. Bethany's going to explain body block. Any, to you know. Anyway, anyway. Um, <laughs> besides my, but it's a bad habit. They're going to start to do this, and, and the dog is going to learn to come. Okay, moving on. Moving on. There is more to this, of course. It's a 12-week-old puppy, so um, hopefully it's not too crazy, but you can just do tug, stand up straight, sit, do whatever you want with the toy. And uh, if the dog does jump up to try to grab the toy, you need to fully stand up and step in towards your dog. You gotta teach place. Man, you gotta get on the place wagon. Because when you teach place, or how we teach it in our online school, is we pattern it first, then we start to take a step back. We want the dog to step up, to step off, because we wanna have the opportunity to move in and the dog reset themselves and they learn that that's how they get what they want. They become sensitive to spatial pressure. You have to set up a dog to fail to help them succeed sometimes. Yeah, even a puppy. And by fail, it's not like something huge, like barking. It's just, you know, stepping off they the cot. They push the boundary, pulling. reinforce that boundary. Exactly. So when you do your thresholds, are you doing it with sit and food or are you adding in some body language? You know, so they start to become respectful of body language. Mm -hmm. Always keep your dog on a leash and then put them right back in crates. After you've worked with them and played with them, instead of any free time, which does not work for most 12 week old puppies, you put them back in cradle. Okay. Uncontrolled free time. So, uh, tips for potty training in an apartment. McKay says, how can I transition my dog from pads to outside? He's fully vaxxed. Any tips for accidents inside when he still can't go out? Well, he has to be able to go out. Like if he, if he can't go out, he's got to be crated. Mm -hmm. but otherwise, he'll get used to going in your house within three or four accidents. He's already been potty trained to go in your home, yeah. whether there's a pad or not. A yeah. pad just gives him a destination. Right. And a even target. if you start moving those pads, honestly, the same age of none? No, no age. It? I'm going to just say this. Fully back is four months old. Yeah, at least four months, yeah. I'm going to assume that you're doing the crate schedule and you just maybe have a little too much free time. When your dog is coming out of that crate, Harness, leash, pick them up if they're small enough or need it. In the morning, if it's like first thing in the morning. Walk them or carry them to their area. Stand there like a tree, wait them out. Two to three minutes. They don't go. And we have a dog right now that doesn't like going outside. She prefers to pee in a crate and lay in it. 
It is hard, and I'm with you guys, I get it. So you wait two, three minutes, they don't go potty, you put them back in the crate. Yep. And if you have a dog prone to peeing in the crate, you watch them. Five minute timer, not prone to peeing in the crate, 15 minute timer, or five to 15, play around with it. And then they go right back out until they eventually go potty. Yep. Once they successfully go potty, then they get free time in the house, most, control free time. Most dogs would rather go outside, mm -hmm. most dogs. So it may not be an issue. If it is an issue, you're taking the potty pad, out with you. That's we soil. actually did that for a week. <laughs> and, and this, yeah. but that's a rare, that's a rare case. A rare. Most puppies would rather go outside, but if not, you're taking a partially soiled potty pad out with you. Um, okay, Maylee says, uh, "What type of services do you specialize in?" So puppy training, and we have a physical school in Hermosa Beach, and we have an online school that you guys can go to thepuppyacademy.com and tap the online section right to on check it out. Uh, Maylee also says, I need help with training my puppy on puppy pads. It's my first time ever doing something like this. Um, for me, it's you've got to, wherever your puppy's area is, has to be full puppy pad. Full puppy pad. So about the playpen, not the crate area. Right, so if it's like a playpen, you've got four puppy pads down in the playpen. You do that for a month, your very first month. And then you remove a puppy pad and see if they continue to target three puppy pads for two weeks. Then you try to remove the other one. You see, see where I'm going here? They have an accident on the floor. It's a horrible, horrible habit. They weren't ready. You put the puppy pad back. And you treat the potty breaks on the puppy pads just like you would if you were to take them outside. I but, actually still even hold a leash on the dog. Yeah, so I, yeah. I like to get them used to at least feeling something on their back because when you eventually take a dog out and you hold a leash, they get frustrated. You're yeah. holding them back. Get them used to it in the house, in the playpen. So when they do finally get outside, they're used to a little bit of pressure on, pressure off, the pressure off when they come back. Yeah. All right, we got a question on TikTok. Um, Hen Cat says, uh, no, it's not Hen Cat. I don't think there's a question. Can I a question? No, I can't read it from me. She can't read it. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. If, if, if Hen Cat, if you have a question, please ask it. Because I just don't understand what you put. Sorry. Okay, moving on. CJ says, what is balloon desensitization? So we had uh, an anniversary here at the Puppy Academy. Ten years, yay! And, and some of the dogs, the puppies, were nervous of the balloons. So we worked on desensitizing them of the balloons. Desensitization is just getting a puppy used to something and more comfortable with it. They may never love it, but just more tolerant of it, then that leads to comfort. And it's just food work. So you might be clear across the room and the dog, the puppy sees the balloon, good food. If they don't take food, you're over threshold, you need more distance. It's the same thing if I was to like do uh, clippers or a Dremel. I don't turn the Dremel on and start Dremeling a puppy's nails. No, I just turn it on, you know, five feet, food, food, food. And then uh, while the Dremel's on, I use my finger and, and just desensitize tapping the toenails. Food, food, food. You're desensitizing, you're building up. So hopefully that- There's a lot of really, really, really great videos on our online school as well as YouTube. That's counter conditioning, the fear associated with it, and then desensitizing the actual item itself. Bingo. A lot of great videos. Would you like to read a question or you want me to just keep doing no, it? just keep going. Okay. You're on a roll. <laughs> yeah, like eight hours of sleep last night, so, you know. Flex Erica, um, Aspen Aussie Doodle, 11 weeks old. Oh, Aspen is the name, Aussie Doodle, sorry. Uh, is that our Aspen? We don't have an Aspen. We don't have an Aspen. We like three years ago. Uh, this is 11 weeks old. Uh, it's a baby. Uh, Flexerica says, do you recommend a longer leash for potty breaks? We've been using our five foot leash. I do not. I think five foot leash is great. I recommend a longer leash, like a 10 to 15 or 20 foot long leash for play in the backyard if you're gonna if you're gonna do it in general. But five foot leash, walk them out there, stand like a tree. It lets them stay in your bubble to go potty on command. And eventually, when you're walking outside and on the real sidewalk, probably still gonna have a five foot leash, not a 20 footer. So yeah, I recommend five foot leash just to keep them in your vicinity so they learn how to potty on command next to you. Have you ever lived in an apartment with a small dog? Mm, I've lived in an apartment with two large dogs. So five foot versus six foot is surprisingly a big help. Do six foot leash. I thought she was asking more about like a 10 to a 20 foot. I, th I, I, I agree, I think you're totally right. But I'm just saying that five foot with a small puppy, 
or a small breed dog is pretty short. It's great for training, mm -hmm. but it's pretty short. You're, they're gonna have to walk with their puppy some, and six foot gives you a little bit more leeway because we do want you to stand as still as possible. We don't want you to move a lot. It causes more stimulation. And with a small breed dog, I'm gonna be leaning over a lot more I with agree. a five foot leash. I so six foot, six foot will make a big difference. Unless they're constantly getting tangled with the leash. Six foot will make a big difference, but don't go over that. Don't do a long line or anything like that, like 10 or 15 foot. Um, okay. Peeing in crate. Oh, this was a video about a puppy peeing in crate that we did. And the question is from Jenny. My puppy sleeps in crate throughout the night. It's no issue. But the mornings are getting, uh, as it's getting lighter, he's crying to be let out earlier and earlier. He also used to be let out at six and would go back to sleep. But now he cries right away when he goes back in crate being left. Uh, four and a half month old golden retriever. He's starting to get more energy. He's starting to get more energy. That's why that's normal. That's, four to six months adolescence. That's normal. Um, but now, yeah, cries right away. He gets enrichment treats and a ball and a dental stick in his, I'm guessing, in his crate, but cries after five to 10 minutes now. We're worried about it waking the neighbors, so we can't really let him, cr we can't do the cry it out system. Here's the thing, like, there, there aren't other systems. You know what I mean? Like, that's, I think that's, I got kicked out, just for the record, I got kicked out of my first ap apartment with my little dog, Happy. happy. So like, I'm, I'm not, happy. I wasn't very happy. I'm not just like telling you what to do because you have to do it. No, 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 I totally get it. <laughs> I was literally sleeping in my bed with Happy in a crate next to me. I totally get it. But the cry it out method is like the method. It's what, it just is. <laughs> so when we get dogs in apartments, if we go through some help. <laughs> it can be really, really tough. I Grab think a couple nice bottles of wine or medium bottles <laughs> of wine your neighbors. neighbors and say, hey, every time you're thinking about calling the landlord or animal control, pop it open on me yeah. at 6 a.m. Yep. You can try to trick your dog and black out their crate. That's what I would do. Yep. If you have um, a decent, you know, a ventilation in your home, it's not like no AC down here by the beach. I don't know how you people live. And if, if that's not the case, if you've got, you know, degrees out there right yeah, but it's not that way the whole re like rest of the year. Anyway, if you've got good ventilation in the home, you want to do something that blacks out that crate. That might be a really heavy blanket. Uh, it could, you gotta just play around with it. They yeah. actually, uh, they make soundproofing blankets that you're meant to like put like studios and stuff that black out your window. Yeah. Like, you're breaking our pin. That, that's my <laughs> pin. I broke my own pin. And it's meant for going on walls to kind of uh, like black out like signs and wait, stuff. Wait, wait, I have a question. That sounds like the dog would like suffocate. Just let me finish. Okay. So we put those on top of crates and we create a little slit on one of the like darker ends of it. Like that's the more dark than Yeah. And then we'll actually put a fan to Bounce off the wall and circulate a small but now amount you of have air into the crate. Now you have light. I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's that much light because even in our, our room. So, so we, you, you can put can... a crate in the walk-in closet. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Smaller closet as yeah. long as it's got ventilation. And a little tiny fan in the corner for like one little slit in the crate. Yep. Honestly, that is your best bet is to try to trick your dog. And uh, I don't know if he's in the same room as you. If he's not, play some music radio, talk radio, people talking to, that just kind of desensitizes him. <laughs> yes, a sitcom yeah, is always TV. really that's useful. Movie. That's honestly your best bet because your dog is naturally going to get more and more energy and they have a strong circadian rhythm. So do we. We just ignore it and screw up our bodies. So when that light comes on, he's ready to get up and do some work and he's not going to go back to sleep anymore unless you spend 20 minutes with him out doing some training. So True. keep up your um, engagement stuff that you're doing, your enrichment stuff, um, but try the blackout and get back to us on how that's going. Okay. <clears throat> Tammy says, 12 week old mini golden doodle has started sleeping through the night. Woohoo! How will I know if this is permanent? Well, you might have just heard the other lady whose dog is now five months old almost, and as soon as it sees the least bit of light, it's awake and it's not going back to sleep. That's an energy change. Um, but you'll never know if this is permanent because nothing is truly permanent with puppies. Everything is always flowing, always moving, and always getting better and improving. Because their hormones are always changing. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to have probably between four and six months in the next four to six weeks for you guys. 
you're going to see a huge regression. Potty training, sleeping throughout the night. I hope it doesn't happen. It probably will because most people get more lax because their puppy's doing so good. <laughs> because we're thinking it's on the permanent side. Yeah. Just know nothing's permanent. And there's always the mentality for dog trainers and owners who work with of go back to the basics when things have changed. Adolescence kicks in, more energy, they want to stay up longer, they want to stay awake, or they want to wake up sooner. I make them wait longer before going to sleep at night. I do a final slow, calm training session. I'll take them out for potty at 11.30, even if that means that I gotta wake up, because that's gonna make it so I can sleep in until 6.30 or 7 the next day, because I get that final potty before bed. A lot of these things will happen, and you have to navigate them through some of the troubleshooting we've given. You might hit a fear stage where your puppy doesn't oh, want to go potty. That's the worst. Where your puppy doesn't want to go potty at night. And you're like, why are you waking me up at 6 a.m.? You know, because you didn't fully unload your bladder at 10 p.m. There's just ebbs and flows, like he said. So just keep up the structure. And if anything throws you a curveball, reach back out to us. Okay, uh, this was a video we did top five things we never do as dog trainers of a new puppy. Somebody said, what kind of leash should I be using with my puppy 12 weeks old? If it's a smaller breed puppy, I would say harness and leash indoors and a outdoors. flat leash, not a rope leash, not oh, a retractable. Oh, thank you. No retractable, no rope leashes. Please, unless you go hiking or like running on the beach, stop using rope leashes. They actually, they're they so heavy. Much. Yeah, they don't do very much to help your dog. They're heavy, they weigh them down. And even when you need pressure, they actually tend to stretch a little bit, like a little, like half well, inch to an some inch. Some do, yeah. Well, some do, yeah. Like the slip links, some of them don't. But most of the actual leashes with the buckle on it, they tend to stretch. So it takes away some of your ability to navigate with your puppy and get head control. Yep. And I personally, um, if it's a larger breed puppy, 12 weeks old, I would start practicing with them in the home on slip leash, but I'd probably be still be on harness out on the walk. Uh, if you need a brand recommendation, I just like Papia. It's one of the, it's like a $10 Papilla. leash. P-U-P-P-I-A. We don't usually Harness. throw up brands. Harness. They have great harnesses because they're stepping, they have a lot of different sizes. They're well priced and their leashes are cheap and they last a long time. And your puppy's gonna go through a few of them, mm -hmm. almost guaranteed. I didn't see what kind of breed it was, but. No breed. I'm assuming your puppy's probably gonna go through some leashes. Papia, if it's a medium to large size dog, get their large because it's just a thicker material, easier to hold. If it's a small dog, not even medium, but just straight up smaller or smaller, get their smaller, they're extra small. They have size charts. We don't have to. Yeah, I don't, we I don't could, trust their size we, charts. We could get to the other I talk more about the comfort of how it feels in your hand versus the size chart for the dog. We want you to be comfortable. Okay. I do. Top five things that we would do as dog, that we would do as dog trainers. Someone asked, uh, Zoe Brooke said, would you have a crate where you want it to stay? Hang on. Um, would you have crate where you want it to stay, but sleep next to the crate for a few nights? Only in, oh, like I can't sleep, I can't function at work, and it's not a few nights. Like it's more than that. It takes, I'm doing a ton of stuff during the day to, to get my puppy better in crate. I'm not letting them out of the crate at all if it's that bad, unless I'm working with or playing with the puppy. That way they learn that they have to rest when they're in crate. Um, if it's that, if it's that bad, it's like never say never. Most puppies I would not do that with unless I had to. I mentioned earlier my little, my first um, personal dog, Happy. I had her in the crate in the bed with me after a week of just horrible whining. I mean, she five hours. It was nonstop. She could not do the cry it out method and tapping the crate and all the things we say to do, none of it worked. So I had to sleep. So she slept in the crate in the bed with me for like, I don't know, a week or two. I don't remember exactly. And then next to me and then a little further away. And so it, it so much depends on the dog. We try to give the best general advice we can. I have a dog named Minnie from about a year ago. And no matter what this woman did, no matter where she put the crate, the only time the dog would sleep in the crate is when it was on her bed. She didn't do that for a year. And after a year, she finally got a partner who started sleeping on that side of the bed. So the crate went to the ground, dog was okay with it. Crate then moved out of the room because the partner went out of the room, dog was okay with it. And now it's in their second hallway in like a guest bedroom and dog's totally fine. But it took a while of that crate being on the bed. Yeah, yeah. It took a while. Yeah, it's crazy. It's just crazy what we gotta do sometimes. Uh, Jesus says, I want to know how I can train my puppy, German Shepherd, 
Um, he, every time we open the door from the house, he runs out and makes a mess to get to the trash. He runs outside of the house to get to the trash. He knows where the big trash cans are outside of the house. My goodness, did I read that right? Every time we open the door from the house, he runs out and, oh, and, and Anne makes a mess and gets in the trash. Okay, either way, you need more structure in your home. And Leash whenever you go outside. Yep. To you, actually make sure you know where your puppy's gonna go and be able to control where it goes. Yep, in the house too, in the house yeah, too. Yeah, inside, outside, and also you need a threshold practice. If your dog is bolting outside, we don't teach bolting outside, we teach waiting at thresholds. Blocking and, then, and food work. And then when you finally do release them, you walk out there with them, and if they bolt and hit the end of the leash and yank your arm off, turn right back inside. I'll yeah. do that five, ten times. If your dog has really got to go potty, what would you do in that situation? I mean, they they just go to the grass and yeah, potty, and then back in, and then I come them. back in yeah. and I pattern calm walking out the front door. I I do it until the puppy walks out the front door instead of jumps and pulls my arm off. But you know where I do it first. Which we probably didn't even think about. Back I door. do it in the crate first. No, great. coming crate, out of the crate. If my door. dog can't come out of the crate calmly, or even just like a little bit like trepidous coming out, like looking around, a little bit confused. I'll help create that because I want them to look to me when they come out of the crate, not just blast out to go to the door and grab their favorite toy. Yep. They're yep. coming out for me, not for everything else. As far as um, the trash in the house. If your puppy is already in the habit of getting in the trash in the house, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Yeah. There is, like, the only thing that stops that is severe punishment, which we don't do to young puppies. It's about management. It's about puppy proofing your house. It's about, like, ba like a baby proofing. You've got sharp corners. You've got drawers. You've got locks now on all those drawers and the toilet seat and everything. I couldn't even get out of the lady's house the other day. She had, too <laughs> young, <laughs> she had to come over and do this fancy <laughs> thing with the door to let me out. I don't know any of those damn safety Yeah, locks. so it's like you, you, it's your job to do that for the puppy. Now, everybody makes mistakes. I'm not picking on you, I, I swear. But now that your puppy's in the habit of doing that, there is no getting out of it. You need to spend several months um, preventing that from being able to happen. There's no magic fix. Exactly. I, had, I had a woman I worked with three years ago, and you, hurry. you know we're over. No, it's not. Hurry we started up. late too. No, we did it. So three years ago, we had a woman that couldn't get her dog to stop going in the trash. We gave multiple advice to just puppy proof. Um, it didn't work for her lifestyle. She mentioned, and then eventually, about a year later, she hired a really, really, really intense dominance trainer who did e collar and gave severe corrections for going in the trash. Two months later, we got a call back and she said it still didn't work. I said, why don't you go for the Hail Mary and just prevent for the next six months. And give me a call in six months and let me know if it worked. We got a call three months later, didn't touch another trash can. We took the area away from it. Oh, per, like puppy proof. Well, then it Even though the dog was older, we prevented uh, like access to the areas for long enough right. to where when she eventually took away that preventative, the dog almost didn't even remember going for the trash. Oh, and I it see. was much easier to manage the curiosity looking in the room of the trash if there's, and there was no other reason for that dog to be in that room and then be like, hey, no, come, but play, sit down good. Here's, here's my rebuttal. rebuttal. The, the one day you put the rest of the roast, tri roast chicken in that trash, the dog learns how to do it again. Oh, I agree. Yeah. She'll be working on this for a year Ever. or two after that. Well, no, forever. Because you could go a year and that dog avoids the trash. But the day you leave a roast chicken in, in there. you the day you leave something like that in there, and then you go take a shower, the dog gets in there and now it's a habit again. He yeah. remembers it. You so you gotta prevent it. You gotta find you gotta lock it into a pantry, you've gotta section off the room. It's a puppy. You shouldn't be getting that kind of freedom. Anyway, sorry. Um, okay. Up. No, we don't, we don't skip it. Look, Court says, I'm allergic to dogs. Um, I've been interested in golden, golden doodles. Any tips on knowing which, just don't say anything. I'll do it. Just, um, <laughs> which is less likely to cause reactions by hair type. Okay, so she didn't say this, but I'm saying it. It's, it's a myth that golden doodles are hypoallergenic. It's a complete myth. However, they do have less dander than the average dog. So it can be really helpful if you do have allergies. You might be able to handle it. It's the dander that causes so, allergies, not the actual hair. Th thank you. Can you just be quiet and let me answer this? I don't think I'm you didn't, you didn't even want to answer it. 
So really quickly, I'm just going to tell you, my husband has allergies, so when we were first choosing a dog, before I had dogs in my home and he has to deal with it, when we were first choosing a dog ourselves, we went and saw little Maltese oodles and all these little poodle mixes, and we had a golden, do actually I think it was a Labradoodle, and it licked him in the face, and his face swelled up. And uh, he actually, his nose was fine, but it, it, he's, and that's hardly ever happened since. My point is, you are just gonna have to seek out the puppy you want, be around the puppy, see if you can breathe, get actual saliva on you somehow by licks and just make sure that you're okay and you don't break out in hives or something. It's gonna be each individual puppy or dog. Okay, all right guys, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you same time, same place next week.